Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. It is a uh, gloriously gloomy Tuesday and we got plenty of oh, God. coming up for you today because it is a, well, we actually did see a little bit of a uh, bull trap go on yesterday that we were speaking about over the weekend. That was the reason for caution. Now, where does that lead us all up to now for the uh, for the rest of the week, starting with Tuesday? Anyways, well, <laughs> we'll be following up on that. And of course, more talking about traditional markets as well as we did see some of our, uh, some of our traditional market targets uh, hit. And... I think that's time for me to wish you the best of the best and the happiest of the happiest. Anyways, uh, looking at uh, looking over here at the crown sheet application, what do we see? We see that the uh, open interest actually did come down from yesterday to today, a uh, very slight amount. We're still kind of hoping, uh, holding the overall range, the range being 1.95 billion to 2.15 billion. And that's kind of encompassed this whole range between about uh, 10,000 and 11,000 as far as the daily closure goes. So. Still also within that region, although open interest did come down a very, 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 very slight amount with that. Uh, what is it like $500 move to where we are right now? I guess a little bit more than that, actually. Bitcoin coming down from 11 to 10, 350. Yeah, there we go. Okay, about 650 bucks. And some bad mental math in the early mornings is really good for the soul. Anyways, uh, looking at the fear and greed index, we did come down quite uh, significantly right there. 48 to a 39. And the Bitcoin dominance um, actually spiking up a bit there, too. So very, very interesting. We are seeing actually altcoins gain on the whole versus uh, their Satoshi pairings. So I think that it would be a wise idea to check out uh, maybe even the Bitcoin dominance chart today and definitely some altcoins versus Bitcoins as uh, that is not what we what we would have expected. Uh, with Bitcoin coming down there, so that does suggest that we are still seeing rotations within this market as far as uh, as far as like altcoins kind of uh, picking up the slack versus Bitcoin, but not necessarily versus US dollar. So again, as always, when we're talking about Bitcoin dominance, it doesn't necessarily suggest anything with the US dollar, just with this Toshi pairing. Anyways, uh, let's go see the data tab and see if there's anything of note right here. Did we actually even go into negative uh, global funny rates? Probably not. Yeah, even with that last little dump yesterday night. Still not 0.01%, so that is literally par for the course. The fear and greed index just coming back down into range. And uh, premium is actually increasing, which is, or sorry, no, that's open interest. Open interest is actually, well, it's, yeah, kind of kind of maintaining it. Um, let's see, did we see, uh, yeah, a premium over here is pretty much uh, pretty much standard right now. It's it's actually increased a little bit over the last uh, over the last few days, but but still realistically just kind of holding the range. Anyways, going to the actual price section charts themselves, and let's see, what do we got here? Starting off with no, not a three. I want to look at the daily. So yeah, you know, this is essentially just a little bit of hindsight shit right here, but uh, but important nonetheless, as uh, we want to follow up from this past weekend, as this is exactly what we were talking about, looking at this area as, you know, if you are going to have a bull trap, this is the area that is very likely to come from. And well, uh, while I didn't necessarily want to uh, front run it until we actually broke 10.8, uh, once we broke 10.8, well, there you go. You get your nice, uh, what, like $500 move from about uh, 10.8 all the way down to 10.350-ish region. Actually, how low did we get here on uh, on Mexico? Uh, actually, lower than that, uh, 10.280. Um, but overall, you know, I did say a very, very short-term bounce on 10.5 and, uh, and another short-term bounce on 10.350. I believe that that's exactly what we're seeing at right here. So in order to see those very short-term bounce, you got to go down to like the, <laughs> you got to go down to like the bullshit time frames, like the hourly right here. Not necessarily a bullshit time frame, but, uh, but, but a very low time frame, especially when you're looking at, you know, macro structures, of course. But, uh, but looking at this right here, you know, that first bounce, what gave us about a uh, hundred bucks right there. High right here of about 10, 6, 20. So yeah, about, about 150 bucks right there. And then, yes, the 350 bounce is what we're playing out right now. And yes, I do think that Bitcoin will come down and graze the overall target of, of, of at the very least 10,000 bucks and probably somewhere down around the uh, the 200x benchmark average right here, which is going to naturally start to line up with all these prior weeks that we saw accumulated in early September of this month. So that is what is on my mind right now. And oh, let me just... Uh... Jesus Christ, man, I realize that my charts are like, <laughs> they're like one smorgasbord of horizontals. God damn, man. Anyways, um, overall, you know, I am looking for Bitcoin to just kind of hang within the lower regions of this current range, the range being, again, between about 10,000 and where we are right now, as long as we are closing, especially daily totals below 10,550. So, so the top side of that liquid zone that I had in for yesterday around this region now just flips, gets flipped to resistance. It's also exactly where the Cyan 89 expansion rate average is right here. As always, you know, things should naturally line up with each other. In fact, you'll almost always find that whenever you have something that works, there's going to be natural levels of confluence between a lot of the different tools there's a fucking reason for that there's there's actually a reason for that um but uh, but looking at this right here yes you know we are under pressure or bitcoin more 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 greatly spoken is under a lot of oh god as long as we are below 10,550. And while that doesn't necessarily suggest that we are actually gonna break below uh, our current wick lows, which is about 9,800, or on a closing basis, about uh, 10,100-ish region right here, 
um, it does still keep, maintain the possibility of it. And as you can see right here, this was really, 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 really important to identify. And so we did get a very good fake out. This is fucking classic. You get a bullish cross on the weekend. And then what happens as soon as the real trading week opens while, while traditional markets, of course, were, you know, closing Friday on their lows, by the way. Uh, well, <laughs> you get a little bit of this. So that bullish cross turns into a bearish cross right at the per right at the perfect moment uh again as the real trading week starts and there you go you get the real direction alongside this we're going to see momentum also is turned down on the daily this is pretty much what we needed to see on the daily uh on the daily soaks yesterday however this trend line right here which was which was providing resistance on the way up i would be looking for it to kind of uh, act as a little bit of a uh, short term short term pivot on the way down and where is that coming in around that's the edge of the bullish control zone of course so again everything everything naturally has confluence here uh looking at daily rsi or anything of interest um not so much uh not so much uh yeah this one got denoted as a high, as 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 a local high I wouldn't, I wouldn't agree with that call right there though. Um, but that's probably due to my settings as I was checking some things out. By the way, you can actually get this indicator now, which is <laughs> which is absolutely hilarious because some people were getting this indicator before even, like this has been available actually for a few days or I guess a couple days now, but somehow people were getting it before I even made an announcement of it. I just spoke about it, I think for the first time yesterday as far as like it actually being available. <laughs> so these fucking savages uh, somehow, some way, some way, it, all, it just blows my mind. <laughs> How the fuck do people know? Um, but, uh, but yeah, anyways, looking at this right here, I don't see anything of interest right now on on daily RSI that we're not really getting from other from other sources right now. Obviously, we are below the exponential. Do I put so much weight on that in this range right here? Nah, there's probably there's probably better things to be looking at. Have to call it Jesus toast to Jesus toast. And um, what else do we have to look at? Uh, well, let's actually start to go down the uh, let's let's let us let us let us go down the uh, the time frames here down the old stripper pole, huh? And 12 hour. Yep. Basing off the 200 simple and 200 exponential mean average, I would be looking for a short-term bounce here, uh, as we said yesterday. And we've already played out about a what $300 bounce, um, or no? How, how how low did we get? Yeah, we got uh, 10,280, and on the high after that, we got 10,520. So yeah, about 250 bucks. I do think it's going to be another try back up to like 10, 550 ish region, but, it, but you know, that is going to be the short term time frame range now to the upside. And as long as you know, as long as we're below it, I'm basically looking for another high to be put in here, a local high in the lower term time frames. Uh, but let's go back to the 12 hour for what it's worth right now and see what Mench Moss is doing here. And what do you know? 12 hour stokes are absolutely nose diving to, to piss and shit as, uh, as it, as it gets out of the bullish control zone for the first time in, uh, about a couple of weeks here. And on top of that, we do see 12 hour RSI is a little bit more in the bearish posturing. However, this is still long-term actually constructive uh you know believe it or not i actually i actually am still macro uh bullish but macro bullish means that we can come not we but bitcoin can come all the way back down to like 7500 and still be bullish on the very you know on the very 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 long term so how helpful is that to like day traders out there how helpful is that to people who are investors on leverage uh probably not all that well <laughs> probably not all that well probably a lot more of oh god and you know exactly where that one's going. Anyways, um, is there anything else here on the 12 hour that I wanna be aware of? No, not really actually. I'm not seeing anything uh, too obvious. Going down to the four hour, what do we see? Uh, four hour stokes getting, getting getting a little bit hot down there, but still got a little bit of room to go. Of course, at the same time, and I'm looking for any trend lines here. Nope, don't see anything. And eh, not yeah, not 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 anything that I put any weight on at least. And actually, kind of gaining momentum there too, which is kind of crazy. Uh, four hour jewel, which did, give the, did which did give the sell signal over here on the 19th of September. I think that this one's mostly played out now. You know, another you know another 200 300 dollars swipe to the downside at 10,000 certainly wouldn't you know would you know wouldn't put that out of uh, out of the mode. But here's the thing, um, that four hour historical volatility percentile read that we are looking at over the past few days to kind of govern this next this next spike well that's obviously broken uh right here we've actually taken out that trend line so it is suggesting that we actually are going to resolve this sooner rather than later now when i talk about resolution times on something like this i usually gun for like the 70 to 75 percent full marker right here that's when they're statistically likely to break so that would have been in about a little bit less than a week from right now uh 26 27 28 of september so this breaking right here you know is that is that relevant yes it is I mean, it happens, you know, and more importantly, we're going to see the moving average actually even get above this trend line too. So that's really going to help kind of confirm this as a new thing going on overall. So if there is going to be ever a time to actually break below our $10,000 lows, it is suggesting that actually, yes, that, that, you know, that is very much a possibility here. But what I'd expect to see is I'd expect to see Bitcoin come down all the way to 10,000 bucks, start to base in that region. And then I want to see a massive spike in historical volatility percentile as it, as it either breaks this region or puts in a major low. If it puts in a major low right there, 
then we probably got a next major uh, we probably got a next macro low if not then it's down to 9100 and potentially beyond but uh but as you know as always going level by level and there will be bounces along the way as well um but uh but you know but again this is this is starting to get to the fun part once again looking at the four hour right here what do we see um four hour rsi getting the bullish control or sorry <laughs> not so much bullish controls on the bearish controls on for the first time in a while um but i don't really see anything uh you know anything of note here either the only thing that i see of note and credit to who is it spliff was it spliff or falcon what who, who was it who who was who was calling out the goddamn turtle yesterday someone made up a new fucking formation calling it the uh calling it the turtle it's basically an inverted cup and handle and yeah i i, I you know i agree it is one um don't look at the measure move though because it's going to scare the shit out of all the blue laws here uh but again this channel's for traders or at least it's, it's designed for traders if hodlers just want to like whip themselves and self-flagellate this is a great channel as well <laughs> anyways anyways look at this area you know uh <laughs> there's your shell there's your little turtle head the turtle head uh, poked out a little bit too far and now he's getting oh god in a whole sea of fucking turtle blood and it is uh well we can play around with it we can play around with the measure move here i want to first say this <laughs> i want to first say this do i trust what this measure move is about to say i anytime that i start looking at shit like this that like really suggests big price uh, price action I take it with a grain of salt as always level by level because you never know where you never know where where someone just decides to step in the market and put put on a low you know it's possible but it is worth it is worth pointing out because this actually is well technically is an inverted uh, an inverted cup and handle and the measure move on this would be if you're looking at this uh more conservatively would be down to about 8500 if you're looking at this more aggressively this is going to be down to about uh, a little bit under 8000 actually <clears throat> So don't call, don't don't tell the blue laws that, and you can actually even extend that a little bit more. You could probably extend that to 7,500. I'm taking this uh, from even a shallower part of what that shell would be. And again, this is <laughs> that's the first time I've ever I've actually uh, I've ever actually even heard it called a uh, a turtle, <laughs> the, the bearish turtle. <laughs> Sounds fucking stupid, and and it kind of it kind of is, but uh, but <laughs> but but I like it, man. I want some fucking turtle soup right now, <laughs> and uh, and 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 there you go. So you know there is a way forwards to the downside but like i said you know if bitcoin breaks this area right here either a daily close uh, below about 10,100 or could i use a wick here as well i probably wouldn't use a wick here i'd use a four hour closure below 9,800 uh, then yes i would extend targets all the way down here uh, like we just spoke about to about 9,100 ish region somewhere in this little pocket right here between about 9,150 and 9,200 anywhere around there looks good to me the 200 simple and 377 expansion average are in that region as well what do you fucking know isn't that crazy how things just start to line up with each other and if we take this one step further we can throw on the volume profile and what do you fucking know where is that good old point of control it's right there smack dab in the middle so again you know these things you know more more confluence is typically better and that's not saying that bitcoin's like on a fucking collision course with that region you know just by the nature of it no uh, again this is only if and only if we actually break below this region right here so a daily closure once again below 10,100 or a four hour closure probably below 98 i'd really be a little i'd, I'd err more on the side of um a conservativeness there because you know what we've gotten in this region thus far is just wicks below 10 100 all the way down, you know another 300 bucks below but no closures below so i would you know i would be a little bit apprehensive on that and just looking at this right here wow uh this is actually kind of crazy uh gdax gdax got much lower than stamp or sorry not uh not stamp but max i'll we'll have to check on stamp but gdax got much lower than uh than than uh than than max right there 100 bucks lower quite literally to the t 10,180 low versus 10,280 low from yesterday that is that is actually a little bit wild so that's does kind of call into question a lot of things that i'm saying because i'm looking at this as still wanting to test the downside uh gx has already tested the downside that is you know that is the basing area from a daily closing closing perspective that's what i would have looked for so if we come back down to that region is it more or less likely to hold will it be less likely to hold we've already we've already tested it we've tested it many times actually by now let's see what uh stamp says does stamp agree stamp disagrees it says 10,286 and finex says 10,321 so yeah i'm, I'm going to go with the majority here but max stamp and uh infinex for somewhere around like 10 3 we'll call it on average uh gdax seems to be a little bit of an outlier and well fair enough 
<laughs> Anyways, uh, there, again, there's your rejection at the 0.5. Classic, classic, classic shit. Um, okay, also, uh, looking at this formation just from a volume perspective as well, you know, we do have potentially <laughs> potentially your turtle soup cone on as well. Where would it suggest a resolution date? Um, next week, actually, yes. Uh, in fact, we do have the end of the month coming at the end of next week. I'd say anytime between the 29th and the, f or between the 28th and the, in like the 2nd of October, all next week, we, uh, this is statistically likely to have resolution. But looking at historical volatility percentile, which is a derivative of a price action, obviously, so it should naturally get things super sooner than, than something like this is suggesting that we actually see resolution on this probably even this week. Um, again, assuming that those prior conditions that we laid out are met. Um, but let's talk about what would kind of undo this. What would make me uh, less short-term, medium-term uh, bearish here? Well, 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 Bitcoin, I'm glad that you asked. Here, which, here's what you need to do. Here's my, here, here's my demands on you. Uh, <laughs> it's fucking dumb. Um, but, uh, but what I'm saying is, 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 this area, uh, is this area right here, the area that we broke on the way down between about 10.550 and 10.6. I want to see 10.600 broke into the upside on at the very least a two hour closure, preferably a four hour closure. And then yes, I'd look for another move back up to 10.8 and probably play a range between 10.8 and 11,100 once again. But as long as that's not happening, as you know, as, as long as we're closing two hour and four hour deltas, especially below 10.6, I have no real reason to be looking at this as 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 anything more than just a very short term uh, reaction. Uh, looking at the two hour, yep, I'd kind of say the same thing here as well. I'm going to see the 200 simple and 21 exponential average kind of naturally line up with these uh, with these areas anyways assuming that we kind of just range here for a uh, for a little bit longer anyways um let's see what else do we want to check out didn't even look at four momentum what do we see on four momentum yeah still coming down still has a little bit more to go as well uh historic volatility percentile expanding so that would suggest that perhaps we do get another strike lower uh, on this on this very drive right here and that's kind of what i'm looking for right now i see no divergences to be spoken of uh yet let's go down to a three hour see if there's anything there present uh, uh, nope, not 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 quite. Although three-hour stokes are trying to cross up right now, but is that anything of note? Um, you well, as long as you're below 10.6, no, not really. You can play out a range between there, and you know it's just more of the same. Uh, so again, I, I, I happen to think that that is, uh, we still, we still haven't really seen anything that's tangible, uh, that would suggest that we're going to have a, you know, a nice bounce from this region, uh, by hourly, what do we see? It's actually been popping up for a little bit here, but still under pressure. And again, you know, as long as below 10, six, I don't really see anything of note there. Uh, what about the hourly? Do we see any sort of divergences here? No, not really. We'll be building some, well, maybe building some, uh, we do, you know, we, we did get pretty low on the hourly right here, but that is again, just an hourly that would suggest that we will close on lower lows as well probably with another test back down officially to 10,100 ish region or a little bit into that uh, prior wick zone below um looking at hourly stokes popping back up uh, pretty aggressively here but again you know this is popping back up all the way and we're more or less sideways i mean the move was here and we've almost had a full-on reset and and holding below even the most uh, shallow of resistances uh, at the current moment in time so Again, I do think that we have another swipe here lower. Uh, I would change my mind above 10.6. That's what I can kind of curtail my thoughts into. Uh, Jewel's not really showing too much except for the 4 but that's that's more or less continuation. Again, you know, it probably suggests that we we played out most of the move anyways. You know, if there's another swipe $300 lower, that's fine. But, it, you know, most the easy part of that certainly played out. Um, okay, let's go over the two day and three day because uh, we got to give the bull laws here something, and we'll just we'll just not we'll just pretend that the two day doesn't doesn't exist. How about that, um, you know, two day right here, yeah, looks looks to me like we're going up for another uh, test of the cyan eighty nine expansion mean average. Uh, we do see two day Stokes popping back up here as well. Now, admittedly, this is coming from the same trend line test that we saw going all the way back here. I guess I already have it in there. Yeah, I do already have it in there. Um, this was getting the lows in December two thousand eighteen, also March twenty twenty, and then more recently at ten thousand. These price points align with this area right here, 3,100, aligns with this area right here, 4,800, and then it would have hit this area right here. But coming back down to test the, these areas has never really happened before. I guess, I guess to like a small degree over here, didn't really come all the way back down though. And, and admittedly, we actually haven't done the same thing here either. We haven't come all the way back down, uh, just kind of tested it on like a wick, or sorry, on a, uh, you know, on a closing basis. Uh, but for right now, you know, looking at this, uh, what would this kind of line up as? Well, I'm curious what this would show. I'm very curious what this would show because I want to know where this would start to turn down on momentum loss. because 
if this is going to turn bearish, if we are going to see this completely fail, and if and if we do expect things below, like let's call it ten thousand or ten thousand one hundred, whatever pivot that you are working with, um, show me what you're working with. Uh, but uh, but you know, and start to initiate targets at the very least to like ninety one hundred and, and maybe below that. Um, then what we'd expect to see is we'd expect to see this start to turn down around the edge of the bearish control zone. Guess where we are? Guess where we are at right now? We're at the edge of the bearish control zone. Well, let's check out uh, what Pig has to say about this with his reverse Stoke indicator cross and 10,300 would be needed to close below in order to turn this baby back down. This is closing, by the way, not, oh, actually it is closing tonight. It is closing tonight. Wow. Okay, so any sort of a closure below essentially the the uh, the green 55 exponential average right here, 10,320 would suggest that yes, we are going to not only uh, not only turn momentum back down on the two day, but we're going to reject it out of the out of the bearish control zone. Bears are still in control, is what that implies. And well, <laughs> and where's the 200? And where's the 200 exponential average down here? You guessed it. You fucking guessed it. 9,100, of course. So looking at this right now, um, I do believe that uh, a lot of that's going to be clarified by the end of tonight. I do happen to think that Bitcoin's probably going to do that. And uh, we'll at the very least test like 10,000 bucks. Um, although you could argue with GDAX that we've kind of already done that. But uh, but realistically, any sort of a closure below 55 would be the initiating move for, you know, you know, you know, a test back down there. Maybe over the next like couple weeks, who knows what it ends up being. I don't have any strong opinions on time analysis. I do have an opinion on on level ongoing level by level though and the three day probably does fall through here too you will see that the three day stokes will cross the downside below 10,200 so as you can see right here uh, let's see um, as you can see right here, we are trying to cross it up at the current moment in time. And it's actually hitting that same trend line that we just spoke about for the two day. It's obviously not optimized for this time frame right now, but uh, but you can see it in there. And uh, let me just make sure that I'm recording. I am recording. That's good. All right. Um, you know, it's trying to cross up right now, but it will obviously it, it will obviously remain to the downside as long as we're below 10,200. And make no mistake about it. Anytime that you see that the two day or three day stokes are in the bearish control zone, and no matter how low that they are, and, and this goes for equally true for the for uh, for the bullish control zone as well. It's dangerous times. For example, um, <clears throat> if you want to look at uh, if you want to look at uh, 2018, remember 2018 on the dump party, the whole year, not not the whole year, but like for half the year, from August to December, we were in the bullish controls on the whole damn time. And when you actually saw the drive from 6,000 to 3,000 in 2018, it happened from this area right here, literally this area right here, which we're kind of in right now. Uh, actually, yeah, we are in that area right now. Um, now I'm not necessarily calling the same sort of thing, uh, not uh, not at all. Again, I go level by level here, but you can see that the you know it's within the card. So uh, so that is that is a major consideration as it stands right now. Um, is there anything of note here? Do we see anything on three-day RSI? No, not really. Yeah, not really. That's that's just potential that's going to be undone, of course. Um, yeah, so I think it's time to move on to maybe the weekly. How does this change the weekly, or is there anything changing on the weekly? Once again, bouncing off the 21 exponential average, and yeah, you know, I would be looking for it to bounce a little bit more. Uh, it's probably going to spend a little bit of time within this region. I, I do think that it would be a little bit uncharacteristic to see the 21 exponential average break on this exact week right here. We probably spent some time testing down to it. And if it closes around it, uh, coming around Sunday or, or, or even Friday for CMEs, I'd probably be looking for continuation coming into next week uh, down, to, down to those lower $9,000 targets. So that's essentially the setup that I'd be looking for. Momentum oscillator is obviously very much geared towards the downside. Uh, weekly RSI is neither bullish nor bearish, just neutral with a slight bearish twist if you really wanted to put it in. Uh, but I don't trust it all that much. Um, and again, you know, I, I don't know if I already said it, but the reverse token indicator cross, you can actually get that in the link below. Um, so, uh, so check it out there. Anyways, um, what else we want to check out? Um, let's go check out, uh, let's go check out CMEs. Is there anything of note here that we don't see on spot price action? Not really. Same areas implied, same momentum oscillators. It looks like as well on daily, actually never getting out of the bearish control zone either. I think that this chart's just easier to read in general. And look at this, the 21 and 55 are actually uh, hinting at a cross here, uh, which I would put a lot more weight on it than what we see on in spot. Although the spot one, you know, is going to get played out, of course. Uh, you know, we are, I mean, we've already seen the fake out right around there, but CME is getting dragged into this one as well, but it would really actually align with, a, you know, with, with, with like some actual powers that typically does hold some weight. Whereas, where's your natural target? going to be your next major level guess where it is <laughs> guess where it is you already know the answer the answer is oh god oh, oh god that's exactly right sir that is exactly right what do we have on the very low term time frames is there anything that we want to speak about here four hour doesn't really i mean maybe a quick test to 10 six uh but again as long as below 10 six direction is down um as long uh, and and momentum also does are yeah they're still nose diving here four hour rsi you know are we even building any divergences nope not not yet 
Uh, not yet, at least. Um, so still got a ways to go. Anyways, uh, on to the next one. What do we have in traditional markets? Do we have anything over here? Uh, NASDAQ futures and... Hey, nice one. We actually, no, we didn't hit my target. I said 10,500, we got to 10,650. Eh, is there another swipe lower here or not before playing out of bounds? It looks like it wants to bounce right now. Um, let's uh, let's go see on the hourly. Uh, do we have hidden bearish divergence here? I believe we do. My look back, I'm, I'm playing around with my look back period right now, so it's not gonna identify it on this time frame. Probably gonna see it on like the two hour, uh, but between this point and this point is what I'm talking about. Uh, may, you know, major new highs on RSI with with uh, with major lower highs on price action. See what the four hour system here fits uh, if it's present here too. Yes, it 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 will be uh, between this point, which is already confirmed high. This one right here is not a confirmed high just yet. It will be if we do close a four hour dildo below ten thousand nine hundred and fifty bucks, um, or let's just call it. Yeah, yeah, 10,950. Uh, if that does happen, I'd be looking for this one to curl back on, uh, on onwards and downwards and, and go and gun straight for uh, 10 5 and play out the and play out the real bounce there. Probably also putting in uh, regular bullish divergence along the same path. Um, but for right now, you know, I, I, you know, cautiously, I do think, yeah, I, I, I do think that this one spends a little bit of time going sideways here and then comes back down 10 5. And I'd be looking for, I'd actually be looking for another bounce in 10 5 region uh, to be to be exactly uh, to be exactly serious with you right now. Um, daily is 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 under quite a bit of pressure. You know, it wouldn't take a lot for get uh, to get the daily to bounce here. So that is why. Do you think 10.5? If it does get tested again, it very likely will bounce it again. I think that we're going to play out some time between about 10.5 and uh, and 11.3 and uh, in range for for probably the west the rest of the week. And then if we close, you know, poorly on Friday, then I'd be looking for attenuation on the next weekly, may, you know, or may, maybe not on the next weekly, but over the next month or two, down to uh, just below 10,000, somewhere around like 98 to 9,900 is where I'd be looking towards but for right now you know we're well and far away from that but it is a good time to reminisce on this we do have three drives of, be of bearish divergence on the weekly one two three right there we are kicked out of the bullish control zone for the first time in quite some time momentum monsters are coming down nose diving below the critical zone at the same time as well it's usually a pretty damn good setup so uh so while i do think that we're you know we're more or less in a bounty territory here on the weekly uh longer term uh, especially with the coinciding with the monthly close coming up uh in just about uh, what eight nine days um uh well that can uh, that can get a lot more nasty i suppose uh tesla battery day we got mr moose day popping back up there and let's see what this is doing still holding uh 450 as i said yesterday or did i say yesterday um as i said whatever day uh you know an event like this it's going to rally into it that's what we're seeing right now um and probably even as the event happens it's going to rally as well but the expectations are extremely high with this so if the expectations are not met um meaning that i mean elon musk himself has been quoted as saying something along the lines of like this is going to be narrative changing or narrative shifting i think i think was the exact terminology correct me if i'm wrong on that one by the way um but something along those lines then what you'll probably be, see is like what you see during a crazy fomc day where you see a major spike both ways and then probably does top out um but again you know i'd want to see it in real time i'd want to see what you know what actually gets said there who knows you know who knows elon's got a lot of tricks up his sleeves so i would uh you know i'd give it the benefit of the doubt looking at uh, apple <clears throat> again uh, Apple giving away the whole five to one stock split as we spoke about over the last few weeks ever since it was you know going to happen and I'd basically be looking for the same thing to happen to Tesla you know oh probably after the event probably after the event over time <clears throat> it's going to get back the whole four to one split or I think I think Tesla was a five to one split so yeah it come back down to like 350 or 300 and Apple was a four to one split if I recall correctly Apple gave Apple gave away the whole thing <clears throat> and, it, and it will very likely come down further here too uh, I'd like to see big corrections down to the 200s actually uh, that's personally speaking and the market doesn't do what I want, <laughs> but but uh, but did we did we hit our 3200 target on on even if for spies? Oh, I think I think we did. I think we did. Uh, 32 17 spot seven and three quarters. Crown, you're wrong. You were 17 and three quarters bucks off. Well, just wait till today. Oh God. And then we shall see again, my friend. Um, no, just kidding. Uh, well, actually, no, uh, I'm not kidding because yes, I do think that's going to come back down around here. Probably a very similar chart to what we see on NAS futures. You know, still got uh, working on a little bit of potential. No, actually, no hidden bearish divergence potential there just yet on the four hour. What about on two hour? Buy hourly says yes, potential, but needs to confirm this is a local high. As long as you're below 3,300, pressure is on for another swipe to the downside. But I'd say I'd say the same thing here as I say on Nasdaq. Probably going to swipe these lows once again. Probably going to bounce off 3,200 once again. Don't think that we're ready to break it like this week if it is going to break. Same sort of divergence is present here as well. So problems abound, but uh, I don't think that that you know comes to fruition this week. I think that 3,200 is probably going to hold it for at least a time being. I mean, shit, man, maybe when we end the week above uh, 3,350, at which point I'd, I'd be looking for 
for a greater bounce back up to like four uh 340 um but for right now you know i'd be i'd be looking for more or less a range and then we'll see how uh, friday closes um okay what else do we have oh frank 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 you motherfucker uh i finally got your lumber futures over here and you've been trading shit coins on the on the commodity exchanges <laughs> what the fuck is this man uh do people just decide not to use wood anymore is wood out of popularity is am i missing something right here like <laughs> I, I you know i i very rarely look at commodities like this so i'm i am not the person to ask about this i want to be very very forthright and transparent I do not have a lot of experience trading uh, commodities like this at all. Uh, oil is about as far as I've went, and I fucking hate trading it, so <laughs> so there you go. Uh, you don't want my opinion on oil, and I don't even want to look at oil. <laughs> um, but, uh, but this thing right here, what do you say about this thing? I mean... I mean, you already know my thoughts on this, man. It's going to cue some Lexington Steel gifts right here. Uh, I do think that this uh, very likely has more downside to go. Um, what the hell happened over the last few weeks, though, is beyond me. I mean, uh, there, you know, there must be something going on in this market right here to cause that sort of a move, you know, just kind of out in the ordinary when, for the most part, it's been holding a range much, 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 much lower between like 250 and 350 and then just spike up uh, 2x above that, you know, and then give it away almost immediately. I Usually that's going to be a bad sign. But yeah, I'd, I'd be looking for it to settle back into its prior range, um, probably somewhere back down to around, you know, 450 uh, for the next bounce. But then probably that bounce fails and then we come back down to like 400 and 350 and play out, play out a range there as before. Um, again, don't really trust my opinion on anything like this. Let's go look, let's go look at another thing that I have no business uh, uh, analyzing. Let's go look at uni fucking unicorn over here. And uh, what do we see? Oh, Jesus, man. Oh, Jesus. Looking nasty. And man, am I going to be wrong? <laughs> am I going to be wrong about my very, uh, about my very, my very lukewarm endorsement of this? I would not read that as an endorsement at all. Okay. Jokes. Maybe I, maybe I should not joke about this because <laughs> perhaps the wrong person will hear the wrong thing. Um, but, uh, but you know, overall, you know, is this thing going to try to bottom out here? This is an hourly. Do I trust tentacle analysis on something like that, 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 that can't even populate an hourly 200? No, not at all. Look at the daily. There's no moving average just here you know why because we haven't even been alive for 10 days <laughs> that's why so how much do i trust in a technical analysis on this not at all uh it needs to be it needs to be around for like the next three to five years um for me to put any sort of weight on this but uh but for right now you know do i think that it's trying to put in a low here yeah it does look like it's trying to a little bit of accumulation if i were to like just base it if, if i were pretending that the hourly was daily which would still not be enough <laughs> to base much off of yeah i'd be looking at this as um probably going to give another test of the upside here short term like back around 45 500 so altcoins do look a little bit like they want to pop up versus uh, Bitcoin, or at least this one does. Let's go look at my favorite one, the the uh, the, the best of the best, the fucking Cardonians, keeping up the <laughs> keeping up with the Cardonians as they crash to the fucking floor. Uh, nope, this one's got more downside. Uh, short term might pop back up to 800, but that's 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 a gift. <laughs> uh, this one's coming back down for the full retrace. We're going all the way down the, the strip of bull today, my friends. Well, not today, no. Over the next like six months, I would be looking for this thing to come back down to like 500 or in below. Uh, right now, you know, does it bounce from this ray or not? I think that it swipes again to the low side and then and then maybe tries to play out a bounce short term. But um, but 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 you know, fair enough. Uh, so maybe not all altcoins are looking great. Let's go look at uh, Ethereum versus Bitcoin over here. What do we see here? Yep, so it looks a lot more bearish to me as well. I'd be looking for this one to swipe down to uh, two million eight hundred sixty-seven thousand satoshis probably over the next week or two. <clears throat> looking at the weekly right here, this is yet again another lower high and a series of lower highs that has been going on ever since the year of two thousand and seventeen. Lower high, 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 and yet again. Then we are working on our, I don't even, I don't even know how many at this point, uh, let's just call it X amount of lower highs. Uh, and this is all coming alongside of major, uh, major, uh, uh, momentum also just turning down at the same time, uh, weekly Stokes or sorry, weekly R side below the, below the same area. man, my, my brain is just, my brain is getting worse and worse over time. <laughs> uh, weekly Stokes coming down as well. Um, and this is all coming along the side of what, what appears to be a major failure there. Uh, let's see what the monthly looks like just out of uh, curiosity here too. Uh, monthly is, uh, monthly actually doesn't look all that bad. Uh, monthly could still pull through. So you know what? Uh, maybe I am a little bit, uh, yeah, may maybe I'm a little bit jumping the gun here. You know what? I think, I think I take back what I just said. I think I take back what I just said. Um, I would, I would be hesitant on this one for right now. The monthly is not bearish, um, at least as it is right now. It'd take another month for it to get bearish if it is going to turn bearish. Uh, so until we get October, I, I think I'd refrain from saying anything more long term about this. But for now, uh, you know, cautiously sideways we'll call it uh litecoin litecoin bitcoin what do we see here uh down 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 we go for the full retrace 
Only Bull and Bear Jesus knows. Uh, Three hundred thousand Satoshi's down here. Um, looks like it wants to. Looks like it wants to retrace down there over the next over the next month or two or <laughs> whatever whatever that one ends up being. Uh, Caretaker has identified this one yet again as a uh, as 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 a correct hidden bearish divergence, and that is coming off of our last printed high right here. And down we go. Um, man, my voice is even starting to crack now too. What about gold? <laughs> what about gold? <laughs> Jesus, man. All right. Uh, hmm. Where did where did my gold go? There we go. Where is my gold at? Okay. Uh, did we did we break formation here? Yes, indeed, we did. Uh, closing on new lows outside of this area as well. This is now going to be looking and operating more like a descending triangle rather than a, than a symmetrical triangle. And if you are and if we, and if you are looking at this as a symmetrical triangle, then it's already broken to the downside, and you and you very likely are targeting moves down to like 1850, of which we got down to 1882 yesterday. Um, but to me, this is this is looking like a descending triangle now, or or resolved a, a, a symmetrical triangle. Both are kind of like you know evolutions of each other as price action moves on. This would imply a move down to yes, the next level at about 1830ish region. Crazy how those things work out. But yes, I do believe that uh, probably probably gonna probably gonna gum for that region uh, over time. Let's see what the weekly and monthly looks like right now. Weekly is yeah, the weekly's got the 20 uh, around that region. What about the monthly? Monthly actually monthly has big problems below 1860. That would actually start to look, make this look like a major, 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 major long look at do, Doge Digital High right there. Uh, in reversal point, which would initiate targets down um, down below 1800 again, actually. Um, so is this thing ready for the for the greater pullback? Perhaps yes. Uh, perhaps yes. Um, I still want to see the monthly close on this one. We're getting very, very close there, but uh, but it is of uh, you know it, it, it is it is of significance right now. Um, what else do we want to check out? Okay, we've checked all of that. Do we want to check out VIX? I mean, VIX probably going to be spiking up like crazy yesterday. Oh, what do you know? <laughs> what do you know? Yeah, there you go. Um, I don't really have much to make out of this, so it's still it's still ranging down more or less. But uh, but yeah, you do get your spikes up. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, United Kingdom. They're probably getting boo caked as well. Oh my God, <laughs> Jesus Christ, man! I believe that we did say that this was likely to happen last week. And while I do think that we'll get a short term bounce from this region, probably even back up to like fifty nine hundred, I do believe that that will very likely lead to a further selling action uh, over the next month or two, down to fifty five hundred. Uh, probably in October. Um, do we see rotations in Russell? Uh, in Russell? No, we don't. Coming down as well. What about NYA? Coming down as well. Ooh, uh oh. The laggards were rotated up, but they are no longer maintaining it up. I think we got some problems here. So let's go check out Dixie. Uh, Dixie, fucking nice, man. So yesterday I was massively wrong in this one. I said, well, kind of wrong, kind of right, I guess. But uh, but I want to give myself the unbenefit of the doubt here. As uh, as I did say that, I was looking for this overall to be bottoming within this region between about 92 and where we are right now. Um, but I was looking for I was looking for a further drive to the downside uh, yesterday, actually, uh, 92 and a half bucks um, before the next before the next potential uh, bounce reversal. Uh, nope, it said go fuck yourself crown we're going to run away and break out to the upside uh, i'd be looking for this one to actually th this th if this is going to reverse it happens from here uh this is it this is it uh, if you're looking at the weekly, this is it. Any sort of a closure above 93 and a half, that's it. I'd be targeting short-term moves back up to 94 and beyond. Um, it's gonna, it's gonna try for it here. It's this, it's I, I you know, while while I did say yesterday, uh, could come back down to 92 or or, or 92, yeah, 92, um, and I'd still be looking at this as, as a low. I don't think that I'd be saying that any longer uh, with with the advent of yesterday's price action. This one's gonna, it's it's legitimately gonna try for it right now um, with proverbial targets up to 95 bucks uh, for a medium term move over the next couple months and for a long term move potentially back up to about 96 and a half. Um, so that also lines up rather well <laughs> with the long term trend, of course, but more importantly, uh, with all major uh, all, all the major markets kind of suggesting that uh, we're in a very pre precarious place right now. Um, well, you know, looking at this low right here, could it could it spend some more time within this region? Yeah, maybe. Unlikely though. I you know I think that if it's going to go for the reversal, it goes for it right now. Uh, momentum also is turning up at the same time. Weekly Stokes, nice and good. Weekly RSI rejecting the bearish controls and getting out of it at the same time as well. Not bad. Um, I like it. I like it. All right. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be looking at that as your potential reversal right there uh, in progress uh, and like the very first push actually. Um, let's go look at Link. What's Link done? Hit all the way down to our like what eighty thousand uh, Satoshi target. Uh, do you think that is going to bounce from here? Yeah, probably going to spend a little bit of time bouncing, maybe even all the way back up to hundred thousand Satoshi's, uh, but still pressure down as long as we're below hundred thousand Satoshi's. But but at least for now, short term, I would be looking for this one to likely bounce back up a little bit. You know, we did we did say yesterday probably another move down to the two hundred X benchmark. If we didn't quite get there, we got down to eighty thousand Satoshi's even, which actually I did say eighty thousand Satoshi's even, but um. 
uh, but, 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 you know, but realistically I was looking for the 200 exponential average to get hit, um, uh, before the next bounce, you know, so maybe, maybe that lines up with another test down here. I don't think that we're breaking a new lows, uh, below the 200 exponential average average just yet. Uh, it's going to very likely try to play out a bounce first and foremost, and then we'll come back, uh, with it. Uh, but for now, you know, maybe another swipe of the lows, but overall I'm looking for a daily low to be put in here and then, and then play out a rally. And then we get to play the game of where is the next lower high? Uh, cause this fucking runaway train, no, no, no turtle soup here. This is just a runaway train. Um, um, you know, getting, getting, you know, get, uh, getting in line with the rest of the market, I guess, uh, not immune from, from the world markets and the ebbs and flows that we see around the lands. All right. What else do we have to talk about? We're already 39 minutes into this bitch. Let's go over here. Let's check out, uh, the Trollinger bands. Is there anything of note here right now? Let's go off the weekly, go to a daily. Oh shit. Fuck. This is what I was talking about when, uh, when the 20 simple has a negative slope while you're above it. That is your proverbial trap, typically speaking. Well, looking at the MACD's nuts, coming up to the zero read, that's usually where you do see things have a little bit of counter trend pressure as the MACD histogram wanes. Again, you know, this, this, is, this is why I keep this chart up here as well. It tends to catch the things that, that, my, that my traditional tools might have a little bit more difficulty. And where's the bottom side troll new band right now as we close our first daily total below the 20 simple? It's actually at 9,900. And guess what? The 10 simple, sl that the slope on this one changed so fucking fast in one day. I think that that was a damn good signal. And in fact, uh, if we look at CMEs over here, I, I, I suspect that they never changed at all. And what do you fucking know? What do you fucking know? Uh, there you go. So yeah, I do think that we're going to swipe the lows just based off of that, actually. Um, the lows being like around 99 to 10,000 uh, bucks. Doesn't suggest that we'll break it like today, though. Um, but anyways, back on to the regular charts over here. I think I would be best to start to wrap this bitch up. And uh, to the upside, I am, well, I am, I'm just not even short-term bullish as long as below 10, what is this, 10,550? I've been saying 10,600, but I guess it's more like 10,550. I think I'm going to stick with 10,600 though, just because like it's a nice even number. Um, 10,600, as long as we're below there on a two hour forward out of closure, I am looking for the next move to the downside, somewhere around 10,000 and 9,800 ish region. Um, and also a bounce there as well. <laughs> but if if Bitcoin does close a two hour or four hour total above 10,6, we'll call it, I would be looking for it to have another spike back up to about 10,8 and probably probably actually exceed it over there because that would make this look like, a, look like a little bit of a fake out uh, or it would be a fake out, obviously. But um, <clears throat> I don't think that that's what's happening to be quite serious. Uh, that would be my criteria for kind of changing around my, my opinion as it needs to be, as it needs to happen, just in case, you know, where things go on within the market for right now, though, uh, you know, short term sideways, extremely short term sideways. And then probably around the time that uh, traditional markets open does get another try to the downside if it wants to um, anywhere, anywhere bet between like 98 and 10,000. I'm looking for another wick to be put in. And I do not think that it will break it uh, on this next drive. I do think that it will bounce it once again from that region. And then we get to see where the weekly close is coming up on uh, on Friday and Sunday, respectively, to potentially drive further targets to the downside, or maybe even mark this off as a potential macro low once again. But for right now, uh, pressure is on. And I think with that said, I'll leave with that. Take care. And until next time.